Hey, thanks so much for downloading the episode on the show today. I have a weird dream about a bat. Producer Dove is getting his favorite car. And we have some hilarious catchphrases from mothers. This and our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie. What do you think you are? Just a souvenir of a good time? Paula. The dudes are sitting there with their wieners and we're like, don't mind us. Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. This is episode 354. We are Sisters Who Podcast. I think we'll just always have to do the operetta intro, right? We'll always do it. Uh, I mean, we've only ever always done it. Do you know why we do it? Do you know where that came from? Uh, I think that's how we used to answer the phone. That's how we used to answer the phone to each other, except for our sister Allison, Well, that... who I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit. <laughs> She's the third... You're the baby, then Allison, then Stephanie, then me. That's the order of birth. I'm the oldest. Mm -hmm. And you're the youngest. Anyway, we would call, and this was before caller ID. So when we somebody would call on a landline, and you'd be like, hello. And then the other sister would be like, oh, be yeah. like, oh my God. So, except for Allison, who would always answer the, I'd say hello. And she'd be like, hag. Yeah, I know. Always <laughs> hag. Always hag. And I'm like, hello, ugly. Speaking of the hag, she's in Thailand right now. She's in Bangkok, Bangkok, Thailand, with Thailand, which is literally, I can't even pronounce the country. I'm so repelled by the idea of going there. There's like a hundred other countries I would rather visit than Thailand and nothing against Thailand, of course. It's just not a place that I would ever want to go. <laughs> well, and you know, she's taking all these photos and I get that she's trying to be all beachy and everything like that. But for God's mm -hmm. sakes, Allison, put on a stick of makeup. <laughs> well, I mean, it's incredibly hot and humid. I don't give a shit. I've makeup. been to Oklahoma and I put makeup on. <laughs> they have special makeup for humidity. I gave it a first effort, you know. I don't care if it melted as soon as I came out of the trailer. <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know. Oh, I can't believe you stayed in a trailer. You know what? Of course you did. You were in Oklahoma. I did. The, what am I thinking? I was trying to be supportive. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> you never put your baby down on the ground, though, right? Of course like, not. Double layered baby blankets. Anyway, so she's in Thailand. This is something that she's been planning for a few years. This is not like some random decision. So she's there with her hubby and taking photos of all the weird foods. I thought it was funny how she, she got there. And first of all, I think they're nine hours. So like it's daytime here, which means it's nighttime there. Mm -hmm. It's like nine hours. The, her very first photo was a Thailand Starbucks. Oh, like of okay. all the things, she went to Starbucks and got a green frappy looking uh, beverage. It probably was a shamrock, you know, frappuccino or something. But it was something. She, well, she thought it yeah. was something crazy. Well, it was green and then a little purple. And of course, everything's in, um, I don't know what the language is there. Um, Thai? Thai Taiwanese? No, that's Taiwan. Thai? Uh, I don't know. Oh, no, wait, where's, uh, where is she in Thailand? She's in Bangkok. Thailand is just a city. So no, I don't know I what they Thailand speak. Thailand was the country. Is Bangkok the town? Apollo, we're terrible at geography. Why are we Hold even on, trying to do this? this? How do you spell this Thailand? Thailand. T-H-I-A-A-I, -A -A Thailand. Things to do in Thailand. No, I don't want to. The best festivals in Thailand. Thailand is a Southeast Asian yeah, country. Yeah, Thailand is a country. Bangkok. Bangkok is the town. Is a city. She's I thought to... Bangkok was in China. That's weird. No, Thailand is its own country. Okay, largest city is Bangkok. Laos, Cambodia. Oh my God, Paula, I would never. Like, I can't. Yeah, she's surrounded by like. They speak. Scary. Oh, the official language is Thai. Yes, the, the okay. official language is Thai. Okay, cool. Anyway, so I'm only saying this because I couldn't believe it. We are very sensitive creatures physically. We are tough mentally and we can handle a lot of crap, but our bodies just don't afford us changes like going to a different country without some fallout she posted a picture last night before i went to bed and i saw it of her and her husband they're at a really cute barbecue place at their hotel there's a pool it's really pretty mm -hmm. and she has no less than three 
they look like cold sores on her mouth. Okay. I can't tell if maybe she burned herself or or something. I couldn't figure it out. And so I was like, oh, my God, your lips. Yeah. But she she didn't reply. They could be chapped. I don't know. That's what I was wondering is like, do you think that they she just the weather is just really getting to her skin? It's hard to say. I don't She's not know. replying to anyone's comments. So that's the problem. I'm just like blink twice in your photo if you need help. Yeah, really. Like, what's going well, on? The first video she took, like the first day they were there, they were walking down the street of some market. Honestly, it looked like Denio's, you know. It did. It, it looked did. like the auction. But yes. what she was filming was like the locals. And I'm like, Allison, yeah. I'm like, they're not <laughs> tourist attractions. They're just Asian people. They're you just can't people living film their life. them. They're just living their <laughs> best life. They're just trying real hard. You can't film them. You know, <laughs> I, I I saw a lot of legs. I didn't even see a lot of heads. I saw her kind of going down, but you know she's short, so it's possible that she that's what she was saying. Then they went and saw elephants, which I thought was pretty cool. They, and they were, were all rescued. Way too damn close to those things, in my they opinion. Were, there were they? no fences, and I'm just like those things will turn on a dime and <laughs> trample your ass. And I'm like, no way. What you're saying is you you weren't seeing any of the joy in her trip. No. <laughs> you were seeing a lot of danger. That's what I saw. Well, listen, I, it is not my idea of a good time, but she obviously is having a good time. All of her photos of all of their processed foods is hilarious. How yeah, she's posting. What? And then our mother, who is responding to literally every photo. Oh, that looks so exciting. And then the last one, she's like, enjoy the journey. Because <laughs> mom is like, no way in hell would I ever go there. That's how mom so. is. She has to respond to every single photo you post <laughs> on Instagram. I told you to make up a fake Instagram. I, but that's like you where have to. everybody follows me on that one. Well, then you just, uh, well, I don't know. I don't I mean, know how to like, convert. No, what you can do is you can say, mom, I'm getting rid of this one or you know what I mean? Or direct her to another. I don't another. want to lie and then have her see I that know. I only have one follower. She doesn't look at that. She just wants pictures of her grandkids and stuff. She's she doesn't not know. dumb. She'd I figure know. it out. You're right. Never mind. Although all my kids have fake Instagram accounts. So I, I know can't see do. their real lives. So anyway, so I hope Allison is having a good time. Ugg in Thailand is not a thing I ever thought I would say. But here we are. And you know what's interesting she and I obviously we're not that close. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love her obviously, but she, we don't have we don't share a lot of commonalities, and so I always feel like I'm talking to someone completely, just so completely different. She reminds me <laughs> that the world is made up of a lot of unique people, and that's how the world spins. You know, yeah, it just it is what it is. I notice that there are people who are really into the idea of going to an Asian country, and then there are other people who are like, never in a million would I go. And it's really interesting. There's a real strong divide. There's no, like, I don't know, I could take it or leave it. There's none of that. It's either yes, I want all in or no way in hell. But I don't, you know, like, I don't, it's just not in my register of a place that I would want to see. But our sister is very different. And it was the first place she thought of when she had two nickels to rub together. Well, so more, there you have more it. More power to her. <laughs> Yes, I just hope she doesn't get some weird sickness or something. Like I said, we're we're hearty mentally, but not physically. Our no. bodies are not big fans of change. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully it works out. Okay, so I've had some really weird dreams lately, and I think it's because of all the medication I'd been taking. Probably. And now that I'm starting to feel better, I'm actually having dreams again. Because I wasn't for like a week. Yeah. <laughs> Just not at all. So I had a dream the other day that I saw a white bat. Okay. Like an albino bat. And and then I saw it and it flew away. So this is the kind of this kind of freaked me out because a white or albino bat in your dream can signify a death of a family member, typically as a result of old age or a long term disease. Really? Yes. And it was clear as day. It was like I absolutely saw it and I watched it fly away. Huh. Isn't that weird? That is weird. <laughs> I wonder who's going to die. I don't know. <laughs> if we put a bunch of credence into it. I woke up and I'm like, oh, I'm going to look that up and just see. Because it's never anything weird. It's always something kind of benign. Yeah. And then it was like, I checked t uh, two places. I checked to see if this was like a real thing. And they both said the same thing. Have you ever seen that guy on E? He's like a young blonde kid. 
that yes. does that. What's his name? Tyler something or I don't know, but he's got a like a weird tick and he's kind of odd. And he just he's that he's the medium. He's yeah, that Hollywood medium. But yes. he just scratches on paper. But he like he's really weird because he knows I know. shit. I don't know how he know. knows things like that. Do you think he's like <laughs> possessed? I definitely think that he is given assistance somehow. That is I don't, bizarre. I, it kind of freaks me out. I, I don't like things like that, personally. I mean... Well, I watched, like, one show, and it wasn't scary. It just no, was... No, scary. It just was strange how he knew things that, mm-hmm. and, like, without even talking to the person. And, I know, and then like, they, the look on their face, too, when he says something like, oh, my God. He'll like, be like, no one knows that. is this is the name such and such significant to you somehow? And they're just like, <laughs> yes, yes, it is, actually. Yeah. You know, so it's just weird to me. But there are those people who claim they can disprove mediums mm-hmm. really quickly. But I don't really I don't really know. I don't like to delve into the spiritual world yeah, in that me, way, I, as you and I do. Yes, I actually just had that conversation with someone where I oh, said, you did? yeah, I was telling them because they're just like, oh, yeah, we'll have to go check out this place where so and so said that they uh, saw a bunch of uh, people flying around. I'm like, you know what? Oh. Actually, no, we don't have to go check out that place. Uh, <laughs> I, I have no desire to go there. He's like, well, we can go during the daytime. I'm like, it's not going to matter. I'm, I'm not I don't going. think that has anything to do with it. And I'm like, you know, I, I've never delved into that type of thing and and i really supernatural you know don't mm-hmm. think i'm gonna start right now at my age so well you know we were raised with a mother who saw some shit and she was very anti-supernatural because she saw supernatural things mm-hmm. and she was very much it was not a pleasant experience and so for her she's like there's no reason to fuck with that stuff don't it's real and you know if you believe in God or if you believe in the devil, you kind of have to believe in the supernatural world as well. It They're all connected, right? Right. And so, and I'm with our mom. I believe that all that exists. I think there's another realm of that. And so I don't want to fuck with that. And uh, those are powerful beings. Mm-hmm. And there's it's not something I'm into. I don't see a reason to introduce it into my life. So God, no, because you never get rid of it. It's like VD. Right. Never goes away. I know we have some listeners who are the ghost hunting people and more power to you. But that is not shit I want to mess with personally. Yeah, but no, I not, agree. not for me. OK, so also and I told you briefly last week, but there was there was a little bit of a change. So I wanted to tell you. Producer Dub has wanted a truck since the day we met. He had one when, when before we were married. He had a little red Dodge. Mm-hmm. But when we got together, his goal was to finally get the truck of his dreams, which forever was a Toyota Tundra. Mm-hmm. But now it's changed. He wants a Dodge Ram, mm-hmm. the Rebel. He finally purchased it. But we don't have it yet. <laughs> oh, he had to special order it? He had to special order it because specifically there's this new thing that you can order as an extra. They're basically built in boxes in the back of the truck where you can put ice. They drain out at the bo- underneath so you can put like beer and stuff. And he's like, we can put groceries in there too. And I'm like, I highly doubt that you paid extra and or- special ordered this truck so you could put groceries in these boxes. This is fishing written all over it. And he goes, no, no. And I said, yes, yes. He goes, all right, fine. Yes, it was for fishing. I'm like, exactly. So he's getting his Dodge Rebel. We'll probably get it in like a month. So he's really excited. Well, that's good. I'm happy for him, finally. I mean, it's only been like 15 years. Yeah, really? And, you know, after a while, you know, he'd mention it and I would roll my eyes and I would talk under my breath. And he's like, what? I go, I'm tired of listening to you talk about this. You need to make a decision, buy your fucking car so we can move on with our lives. Really? Didn't you feel kind of bad because you got your Mustang like a long time ago? (laughs) My Mustang is paid off already. Like that thing is done and done. And I've been telling him forever to to do it. This is not about me or or the money. This is indecision that has prevented this purchase. So it's he finally got off the pot. Picked out his car and he's like, well, now, I mean, I might as well get exactly what I want. And I said, yes, absolutely. So now he has it or it's coming, I should say. And I'm so happy for him so he can finally stop talking about it. Well, good. I'm glad. I know. So anyway, moving on. I just wanted to let you know that he finally got it. Good. Okay. So I saw something the other day. It reminded me 
of our childhood, it was mom catchphrases. Okay. And I know you probably don't understand what I mean, so I'm going to tell you and then you're going to totally get it. Because I think you and I, because we're, we're, we have such an age difference, I think the catchphrases that our mom used on us had changed a bit as we got older. Okay. So mom catchphrases are the things that moms say to their children repeatedly for anything. Like, for example, this one says, whenever my mom made a wrong turn, she'd say, the world is round, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> or... This one, our mom kind of had something like this. Failure to plan on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. I love that well, saying. Yeah. Yeah. So you say it. <laughs> I think I printed it and posted it on my wall at work. <laughs> yes. She'd always say, remember your six P's. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> Jeez. Can you even imagine? No. She's like, when my mom would get really mad, she'd shout, God bless America, in place of an (laughs) expletive. (laughs) She goes, it was scary as a kid, but hilarious now. And this one, my mom is a nurse, and anytime we'd say my stomach hurts or I don't feel good, her first question was, without pause, when was the last time you pooped? Like That's what I tell my kids every time, is they're just like, my stomach hurts. I'm like, did you go to the bathroom? They're like, I'm going to go try. (laughs) So Yeah. Like for me, whenever my kids are like, oh, I don't know, my... My stomach hurt or my my chest hurts. I don't feel good. I'm like, did you just have a stressful moment? Are you having a panic attack? Right. Because it's usually what it is. This one made me laugh so hard. I wish somebody said this to me because it's hilarious. It said, whenever my sister or I would complain about doing chores, our mom would say, what do you think you are? Just a souvenir of a good time? (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was great. And I was trying to think of some of the ones that our mom said to us. And it was almost verbatim every single time was, Mom, we're hungry. Can we go get something to eat? Jamie, there's food in this house. There's chicken. There's vegetables. There's bread. There's eggs. There's things to eat. You just have to make there's an effort. There's turkey. There's tuna. There's bread. There's You just have to make an soup. effort. Soup. <laughs> eggs. <laughs> Always, always. And then the one that actually came up, uh, you were starting school. I think you were in kindergarten or first grade and she had to start making your meals like making your lunches Uh uh-huh she went through a phase where she's like no we're gonna make make healthy lunches god she bought something and i go why did you get this and she goes because it's delicious nutritious and fun (laughs) (laughs) she used to say that so funny i think she made my lunches for like a week and then i was buying school lunches yeah by then she's like here's five dollars (laughs) right anyway i was thinking about some of those and i thought yeah, you know, our dad had some too. Like, uh, well, Daryl's dad had one. He said we, he would make breakfast or whatever. He's like, come down and eat before I throw it all out. Yeah. He would say that every single time, which I thought was really funny. And our dad's was always do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> or stop being a candy ass. <laughs> stop being a candy ass. Yes. Why are you crying? <laughs> right. Stop. Why are you crying? Stop That's crying or I'll give you something to cry about. Cry about. Absolutely. That happened a lot. Which parent of ours said, who do you think you are? Would you think you were born in a barn? I think that was mom. All the time. Close the damn door! (laughs) What, are you born in a barn? Yeah. When I would go out, she'd be like, do you have a quarter? And I'm like, "What? Uh, yeah. She goes, always keep a quarter because you never know when you need to make a call. (laughs) She always said that to me. It just reminded me because I'm reading one now that said my mom would say in a sing song voice, don't speak to any strange men. (laughs) Yeah, I always talk to them. Don't talk to strangers. (laughs) Make good choices. I do that, too. Yeah. Mind your manners. Be polite. Yeah. Clean up your mess. (laughs) Yeah, I'm trying to remember what else I would ever would ever say to the kids. But it's always like, uh, you know, wear a condom. Don't get pregnant. You don't want that path yet. I have talked to Ryan about that, like when he was, you know, going through that phase with his grades. And I'm just like, Ryan, are you doing drugs? He's like, no. (laughs) Well, do you have a girlfriend? And he's like, no. (laughs) So just wanted to to go through the you had to go through the list of potential reasons why he's struggling. You know, if he was troubled, you know, why what it might be. Yeah, well, you know, being direct is the way to go, honestly. And then, of course, there's the other ones like our dad saying, never feel bad about kicking them in the nuts. Yeah. He always said that never feel bad about it. Just kick him in the nuts so you can get away. Yeah, that's true. 
The other one was our mom saying, when you punch, punch all the way through. Don't stop because you hit their face. Keep going. Yeah. You want to punch through them and let it be the only punch that's thrown. She always said that to me. She's like, if punches are thrown, make sure you're the first and the last. And there's only one. Yeah. And it's yours. I think dad just said, keep going until they fall down. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Interesting. I never heard that one. Well, I mean, I, in theory, mom, I get where she's coming from. But if they mm-hmm. come back at you, you got to keep going. Well, listen, we are blessed with blind rage. <laughs> <laughs> and so there was going to be no losing any battles. I don't ever remember losing a fight. I was in a couple. Mm-hmm. I never remember losing ever. Yeah. Ever, ever. I remember. Well, you know, Stephanie used to get herself in a lot of trouble because she had a big mouth. Oh, gosh, she does. I can't tell you how many times I had to approach quote unquote bullies. <laughs> I remember specifically approaching somebody on, we were driving and Stephanie said, that's the girl, that's the girl that's been threatening me. And I said, are you sure? And she said, yes. And so we pulled over, I got out of the car and I ran them down and I threatened their, I didn't touch them, but I threatened their life. I mean, neighbors were coming out watching. Oh my God. And they never spoke to her again. Never, ever. Ever. Good. It was, I'm sure, very terrifying for them. <sighs> I still don't have any guilt about that. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't no, either. I, don't. I was in my cheer uniform, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, I was. Okay. Anyway, well, that's what you do when you have sisters, you know? Yeah. You defend. You protect and defend. Oh, God. All right. Well, let's do our ugly and awkward moments of the week. <laughs> not really an ugly moment but it's just more of an awkward moment all right for the life of me and this has been my whole life i cannot remember a song lyric to save my life Mm. and i don't know if you have that problem but no actually i don't because i'm very good at remembering lyrics what i am bad at and what you're really good at is movie movie lines Oh, okay. you remember movie lines better than anyone I know. You'll say something. And I'll be like, I have no idea what movie that you're like, Jamie, it's Greece. And I'm like, oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes, of course. Whereas I'm I will know the most those weird muffly lines out of a song. I can hear it and I know exactly what it is. So all week I've been like obsessed with singing two songs that fall to pieces songs by Velvet Revolver, where I still only know fall to pieces. <laughs> right. That's like the only line I still know. Right. And then um, then I've been listening to Hotline Bling by Drake all week. Oh, <laughs> and so that's a wide stance of music. I know, right? And so Ryan really likes Drake. And oh, so okay. he'll hear me and I'm like, I know when that hotline bling, it don't mean, or I'll, I'll start, I'm like, it don't mean a thing. He's like, mom, that's not how it goes. Oh, he gets angry and at so your imperfections. He gets so annoyed. <laughs> he gets so annoyed. I'll go like, ever since I left the city, you, you're wearing less clothes. You're getting pages in your passport stamped. And he's like, mom, that's like, that's like not even close. And so he gets so pissed off. Well, doesn't it make you happy to make him mad? Yes. And sometimes I just make it as like worse as possible. (laughs) I mean, I'm relatively close to like in theory to what he's trying to say to Drake, like what he's trying to say. You've got the, you've got the general idea. I've got the gist of it, yeah. but it's it's not even remotely close to, mm. like, what he's saying. <laughs> I have to tell you, Paula, I barely remember last week. Like, it is such a blur. Aww. It is such a blur. I can't remember a thing. I was so sick. And then, uh, you know, you feel like you come out of the light, but this has been such a long illness. And, of course, Daryl this morning is like, so do you think you need to go to the doctor? And I'm like, no. Everything does not require a doctor, okay? I realize that it's been a solid two weeks, but the reality is, is I'm obviously better. I have energy. I'm, you know, Malia, which is going to be my ugly and awkward moment. uh, We're getting ready to do her senior portraits. So we met with the photographer yesterday and that was super fun. Oh my God, Paula, her house was so nice. She lives in Los Lagos. Oh, that's nice. Although that whole situation was awkward, we get to the, because it's gated, so you can't just go flying in. Mm -hmm. And so I I go to the door, or we go to the the guard office, and I said, hi, we're here to see so-and-so. And And he's like, okay, one moment. And he goes, what's your name? And all of that stuff. And then he goes, you may proceed. I'm like, thank you. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, 
I said, okay, listen, I told, I told Malia, I said, whatever I do, do not let me go on and on about the size of her house. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, I really? Don't wanna, I don't want to be that person who goes, wow, this place is amazing. You know, it's like, we have to act, I have to act chill. I have to act like it's no big deal that we're in one of the most expensive areas of Northern California. Well, I was just okay? going to say, I mean, that's like probably the most expensive houses in Sacramento County, at least. I think there's parts of Fair Oaks that are like that, but this is like where Eddie Murphy lived. Yeah. These houses are incredible and they're beautiful. So yeah, we're driving are. around and and I was like, wow, you know, I was so impressed because everything's really beautiful. It's not just. Well, and all the houses are unique. They're all custom. Yeah. They're all custom built. So every home is different. And there's a lot of rural parts to it too. So it's not just like house, house, house. You know, there's like a whole section with oak trees and a, and a meadow and, mm-hmm. you know, so they keep it really natural too. So you don't feel like you're just walking into a, a fortress of concrete and homes. Well, and aren't they like mini mansions? They're not really houses. No, they're mansions. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they're all mansions. Hers, m- shockingly, was not one of the humongous, grand, like a maid answers the door for you kind of place. It was right. a very simple beautiful but just beautiful home and her office is like i just want to live here right (laughs) so it was amazing chandelier you know everything was really pretty and i just loved it it was my style totally cool anyway so it was a great visit we decide she accepted us as clients and we accepted her as the photographer it's going to be a super fun experience for malia and i cannot wait and the reason that i think that senior portraits are a really good thing is because specifically for women The only time that you ever really get photographed where you look really beautiful is your wedding day. Yeah. And that's it. And I mean, what if you get married when you're 40, you know, or what if you get married, you know, you don't have any kind of really amazing photos when you're young and beautiful and you have the whole world ahead of you. Uh huh. And I just I just love it. And so we're on our way home after our amazing visit. She's just one of the nicest people on the planet. And I'm chewing gum. Because I'm trying to get my ear to still pop. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm chewing gum. Now, I've been told I talk a lot. <laughs> yes. I don't necessarily agree, but I have these checks that happen where I go, oh, maybe I talk too much. I was talking so much that my gum fell out of my mouth <laughs> oh, God. and landed on my seatbelt strap. And of course, we're in traffic. So I go to grab it and the person on to my right is, is staring at me and watch my gum fall out. <laughs> So my, I'm holding it going, well, if I put it in my mouth now, they'll think I'm gross. If I throw it out, they'll think I'm a litter bug. So what do I do? <laughs> so I'm holding this piece of gum. Did you have like a little piece of paper somewhere? No, I have nothing. And so I put it in my mouth. I'm like, well, it, what am I going to do? It's either I'm gross or I'm a litter bug. And, I, and I'm in, you know, Granite Bay and I don't really want to be judged. Yeah, I'll so. go with gross. I'll go with gross. So I went with gross and I was like, oh my God, it was a no win situation. Well, what can you do? It was like, it was like Sophie's choice for God's sake. God, that movie's <laughs> horrible. I know. I was, that's why I was being, you know, that's the, that's the humor. Yeah. In it, no, I you gotcha. Know? God, when I saw, actually, I didn't watch the whole movie, but I just saw the part where she had to choose and I was just like, <gasps> oh, Paula, it, it is, in, it is burned in my brain. Jamie, I don't it's even know terrible. what I would do. I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't, I would not. They, cause they, the thing was, they said, if you don't choose, we'll take them both. I, and I think I, I almost I, would have to have them take them both, honestly. I don't even know if I could choose. I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. It was so terrifying. It was, a, it's a terrifying prospect. That's why it's one of the best movies ever made. I just, as far as that, it's, it's so, it's so horrifying that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I, I think about that all the time. I mean, not all the time, but when I think about that movie, that's the part I think about, and I can't even fathom. And she ends up losing them both anyway. Oh, she does. Yeah, she ends up being like a drunk, and you know, I mean, as any woman would who made that sacrifice. Right. Y- there's no way you recover from that. Yeah, so. you don't. No, you don't. Yeah, it was terrifying. Just a terrible thing. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, she gave them the daughter, and the daughter was not killed. Oh, really? She was sa- she was raised I believe if I'm not mistaken, she was in a place where she was not killed. 
but I think the son ultimately was killed. I could be completely wrong. I can't get through that movie. That's one of those films that I cannot. That's like Schindler's with, List. Like who watches I can't, that? Nope. I've seen enough of that to know that I don't need to see all of it. I, I understand that those films are important for history, but I can't. It hurts my heart. It hurts my body. I can't, yeah, I just, can't fathom that. Humans do that to other humans, to me. I mean, it happens even today. Well, look at that mosque thing that just oh, happened. Oh, Paula. I can't. Jamie, I, I, don't I mean, even, I do. I don't even understand things like that. I just... I don't either. I do not understand. I was thinking... I, I told Daryl, I said, you know, I was having one of those deep thoughts about humanity in general, and it doesn't even matter about the politics. It's extremism. It's mm -hmm. this inability to decipher anything real where you're so blinded by this thought process that you're not even you're not even interested in dialogue you're not interested in seeing anything you only have this one way of thinking and it doesn't matter if it's right or left or whatever you want to call it it is extreme thinking and this is what happens is that it motivates people to do horrific things to people and it's awful it's so bad and, and this obviously doesn't compare to this, but I think this is how it starts. I read an article about a black female employee that worked at Verizon Wireless. Did you read that? Mm -hmm. No. She had been being harassed mm -hmm. by her, you know, surrounding coworkers. Mm -hmm. And she had reported it to supervisors, reported it to her union reps twice over like a six month period and nothing had been done and she came into work there was a noose hanging over her <gasps> desk what the hell and so now she's suing the company good but i mean i'm just like it's how does it's that 2019 what are we and doing are we still really doing that shit like really i we're, we are obviously not evolved well, and, some of us. <laughs> well, and I think the thing is, is, is like, you know, people are just like, well, we just need more training or we need this. And no. I'm like, no, I'm like, you know, there's been extensive training and there's been extensive lawsuits and it has nothing to do. There with is that. just an evil in people that yeah. cannot be rooted out. They're nope, just it isn't. And they're not interested either. They're not interested. They don't want to change. They don't want to see a different perspective. They're just like, this is the way it is done and done and and not only that but they want to aggress their agenda yeah. you know yeah they want to pursue these evil acts and all i can say is and i and i still say this with good faith that they are still the minority i hope i i hope that they're still in the minority those people who don't see anything beyond color or religion or something i just i hope that i hope that in the world that they're still the minority yeah and although they they commit horrific acts and they're un, they're unforgivable and they cause so much damage that they're still the minority that people still in general look at those people and go how disgusting are you yeah you know it just frightens me because i think about how many jews were killed and that they probably mm -hmm. could have overtaken the german army anyway you know yeah yeah, but, I hear what you're but saying. they all fell in suit, you know? Yeah, well, it was a different time. And so you know, people people were taught to, re to respect authority no matter what. And that's obviously changed, as we've seen. I don't know if that would ever happen now. I don't think it, I don't think it's possible. I mean, I just don't think people would tolerate it. I would hope not. I don't know, though. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I mean, I, I come from a place where acceptance is key, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, we we lived in a world for a long time where it was stick with your own, let everybody else do what they got to do. But I don't kind of feel that way anymore. Now I feel more of a that community is far more important yeah. than, than that personally. But maybe it's because I'm old. True. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? I'm not sure. Hard to say, but... Okay, so really quick, it was funny because we have not visited some of the things that we talk about, like why do we call each other UG or why when we close the show we go, bye. Yeah. Okay. Do you know why we do that? I I think it just kind of happened, didn't it? Well, this is what happened. I started it. Okay. And there, the movie Sleepless in Seattle, yeah. there is a scene. There's a scene when he's working on a house and she's a really difficult client. Yeah. And she's constantly <laughs> changing the kitchen. Yes, I remember that part. Yeah, you, so you know. And she's like, well, I have to go. La Decorateur calls. Boom. 
bye. And then they're all bye. <laughs> That's where it came from. And that I think it was funny. at some point forever ago, you must have said something like, well, I got to go. I've got to go get the kids or something. And I'm like, bye. Yeah, <laughs> that's where it happened. That's where it came from. That it's is so, so funny. funny. So now that's what we do. That's what we that's what we do. So now next week we'll have to talk about lip and clip and hug and ug and uganon and all of the stupid shit we say. That's like new language. That's hilarious. I know. <laughs> I thought so, too. Well, happy St. Patrick's Day. Hopefully you are drinking green beer and eating your corned beef and cabbage and potatoes. Oh, my God. I've got to make that. Oh, I'll be making it today. Uh, Sunday. Yeah. So yes. we have our stuff as well. I don't think we have any potatoes yet, though. We got to go get those. Do you do red potatoes? I usually just get the little white ones, I think. Mm, okay. Do you do red po- red potatoes? Mm-hmm. I do. I just get the little white ones and put them in whole. I don't cut them up yeah. or anything like that. So uh, You know what? This is one of my most favorite meals that I make. I, I really love it. It's good. I love it. But you've got to like cook it forever though. Forever. And then, you know, and buy the biggest one you can because those things shrink. Yeah, they kind of do. I hate it. Like a frightened turtle. Like a frightened turtle. I said that the other day. I was playing my video game, my my World of, World of Warcraft. Yeah. And I said I said something like that a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, like a frightened turtle. And someone random goes, "Is that a Seinfeld reference?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes, yes, it is." We're like, "Yes, good," because you know, they're everything's so chock full. Of, there's so much pop culture now that you forget about the OG ones like Seinfeld and Friends. Yeah, they're they're very few and far in between. So. Very few. Not a square to spare. Not, a, not even a square. Not even a square. I had not a square to spare. God, that was so rude. Oh my God, I know. But I mean, Bitch. honestly, I think a square would have just been worse. I, you know, listen, I've been in that situation where I've gone into a stall, like at a movie theater or a concert or something or a bar. And you go in and there's no toilet paper left in the thing. And first and foremost, I always judge. I'm like, how hard is it to check the fucking bathroom? I know. You're open from 7 until 2 a.m. That's not that long to go in. They don't care. Most people go in there to puke. They're not in there to pee. Well, still, there's there's never any damn toilet paper. So what do I do? I don't know about you, but I use the toilet paper or the the toilet covers. The ass gaskets. The seat covers. Yeah. I'll use this. Yes, I use the ass gasket to wipe myself if I have to. I will. I will use anything. How many times have we been into the men's room to use the bathroom? <laughs> okay. Walk in there and meet gaze and all the dudes are sitting there with their wieners and we're like, don't mind us. <laughs> I know. And, you know, somewhere along the line, I read something recently that men find that really offensive. And I'm like, fuck you guys. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is the closest you're going to get to a woman at a bar ever. Oh, ever. my God. That one time, though, you know, I really, <laughs> I will never forget when we were at the Slime Light. Oh, God. And we were we were so hammered. And there was a line, a long ass line to the women's bathroom. And I said, that's it. I like lost it. I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> Walked into the men's bathroom because there was no line and there was nobody in there. And I said, Allison, you guard the store with your life. I will. I go. I sit down in the toilet. They had an actual stall with a door. Yeah. I sit down. I pull my pants down and I pee. And I mean, within nanoseconds, can I help you with anything? And I'm like, Allison, <laughs> she's the I'm worst. sorry. Why, why I'm sorry. Why <sighs> would you let her? No, the one time we went there. No, it was me and Stephanie, and she was talking to some guy. I don't know who it was. <laughs> and I went. You know what? Maybe it was her friend Mark. I don't know, but oh my god, that guy got me in so much trouble. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> he got but, me in so much trouble. Um, I went into the bathroom and I was wearing like a T thong G string thing, mm-hmm. and it broke. And so, oh no! So I had to take take my underwear off and throw them <laughs> in the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, that sucks, man. I, I feel like I've done that before. I've thrown my God. underwear in public bathrooms. Oh, so the day Ryan came home sick, he took mm-hmm. off his socks. He went to go throw them in the hamper and he threw them in the trash can. <laughs> they were that gross, huh? No, he was that <laughs> sick. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd be like, you know, I appreciate it because I realize these are disgusting, but they're new. And so we're just going to wash them in I bleach. Mean, typically okay? they are radioactive, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know. <laughs> no kidding. Anyways. That's so funny. Yeah, we'll have to talk about some of our bar adventures. Oh my god. It's, you know what? We've had so many that I literally don't miss that time in our lives. I, I feel like we lived a hundred lives back then. I'm already getting a headache just thinking about just it. Just thinking about it? I know. I mean, oh. you and I have had some adventures, that's for sure. Oh my god. Oh yes. I'm so glad. I, I remember not that many I actually pictures. I allowed Allison to drive my car. That's how bad it was. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that time we went to where S- Stephanie lived and she it convinced us that we had to go to this one bar and there was karaoke and that guy who he, he showed us like a wad of cash. He had like three grand of cash because he was a construction worker and he wanted to buy us all drinks and he bought us Jägermeister. Oh my God. Right? God. And I took, I took a sip. I'm like, this tastes like Robitussin. I can't drink it. I, and Stephanie turns and she goes, you will drink it. I dumped <laughs> Be it. Be polite. I dumped it in the plants on the, I did too. Uh, <laughs> on the counter. I did too. I refused to drink it. I'm like, I am not going down this road. I'm like, that poor <laughs> this plant. This is bad. Well, and then we at my already hammered. Then at my bachelorette party for uh, oh, Victor, my God. someone bought us a <gasps> round of Jose Cuervo, and I'm just like, it was I'm all, did somebody piss in this cup? What is this? And it so, was so bad. And the guys that were doing, there was these two guys that wanted to buy us rounds, and I'm like, this is the best you could do. I remember. I remember looking at them going, this is really, what did you do, spend a whole whopping $5? Oh, my God. <laughs> We were such assholes. I remember my friend Tracy. She's like, be polite and drink it. <laughs> I'm like, All I right. know, I know. And I'm just like, who are you talking to? You drink it. If you think you can get it down your gullet. And it came in, I a, can't. It came in a red solo cup. Uh, and then I remember Stephanie going, oh, for God's sakes. And then she grabbed him and hammered, just slammed him down. Oh, my God. I'm just like, it I did gross. not want to start my evening this way. And then I was shoved that- my hand down because I was giving a tip to the card reader. <laughs> And I shoved my hands down his pants to give him a tip. I felt oh. hair. Ew! <laughs> he was cute, though. Just a lot of hair in the crotchal region. Um, you know, Paula, I think I a little a- bit closer, I probably would have felt his wiener, Jamie. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I know. He had a large pubis, though. My goodness. <laughs> there are so many. There's some photographic evidence of that evening. Where? Um I have I have a po- it, not of us oh, okay. it, of the crowd. I remember taking a picture of the crowd because it was such an ugly crowd because it was St. Patrick's Day. Oh, that's right. And so it was a just a full on crowd of all kinds of people. <laughs> there was a couple of people that we were pointing out that we were just like, oh my god. And so I took a photo. I have it somewhere. I'll have to show it to oh, you. That's right. That was the night you were smoking a cigar with this guy where his girlfriend <gasps> was off running around somewhere. Oh my god. And then she showed up. She's like, what's this? And I'm like, I'm married. And she's like, and? and you're I'm like, like Here, here's the cigar. <laughs> oh god, that was bad news. That was such bad news. And then, of course, I feel found the only man in the entire bar who gravitated towards me he bought me a, he bought me a cocktail and he was like well i just broke up with a woman that i really wanted to have children with and i'm like oh that's really too bad he goes you know i'm so rich and i just want kids and i'm like i have children and i'm married he's like well is it a, is it a good marriage i mean and i'm like dude he started crying Oh my god! He started crying, and I'm like, "How do I?" And I remember looking around, going, "How do I? How do I find this? Why do I find the one man in the bar that wants to settle down? How is that? How, how I would that have been to like, me? am I on Impractical Jokers or like, <laughs> where's Sal? I, I finally just left it. I, and he did end up taking another woman home. Thank that God. Night. Obviously, I mean, I'm not gonna. He was not my thing. But I just remember thinking, you know, this has been my the story of my life, my whole life. I have never been a one night stand for anyone ever. They, they they meet me and they go, "Your my mother would love you," and I'm like, "I don't want your mother to love me. Just can we have sex and be done with it?" I think I just need to get laid. I think I did. Well, no, it wasn't technically. Well, no, I guess not. It was that guitar player. So, uh, okay. And we saw him again at another time, like right? Like years later. And okay. I didn't think that he would remember me. Oh, he remembered you. I know. I remember. And I also remember going, you, you going, that's the guitar player I had sex with. I was like, oh, he's really kind of cute for a cover band guy. And next thing I know, <laughs> Stephanie's bending me over and spanking me. And I'm like, ow! I was like, what the hell? 
hell? It was insane in front of a huge audience. I might. Well, add. we were behind that white thing, so God, that was so hilarious. <laughs> That was so hilarious. People, you wish you knew us. I'm telling you, we were insanely funny. Oh, back then. my God. You know, uh, and even now, I mean, if the four of us or the three of us were to get together and go do something, it would it would end up like that. It always still, does. Probably. It still always does. So. Oh, dear oh, Lord. God. Well, right. what are you going to do? OK, I don't so. Know. Oh, uh, our mother. On, what about mom? Oh, God. What? Daryl may need to cut this out. Um, Just wanted to let you know that we are going to Turlock. Mitch is in the hospital with cancer. He is going to die. Aunt Charlene could not make it. Her grandson is living in Turlock with his half-sister. She called me last night. Oh, my God. Our cousin, Mitch. Yeah? He has cancer and is dying. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I'll, I'll respond to her later. And, but but his perverted father is still alive and kicking. God, fuck me. Jesus. Right? Jesus Christ, that guy. Well, Mitch is old, isn't he? <clears throat> oh, yeah. I mean, he's in his late... Well, I mean, older. He's in his... I think he's in his late 50s, almost 60. I mean, he's way older than we are. But I mean, I, mean, I least... guess that's not that old. No, it's not. I think he's in his late 50s. I think he was about... 10 years 10 or 12 years older than me yeah i mean i remember him being like a full ass teenager when i was like eight so i mean he i actually, mean i remember be... him being a grown-ass man when i was like you know nine or ten or yeah yeah i think he i think he's older i think he might be 60 yeah i would but, say so about he's 60. way older yeah he's probably 15 yeah you know what he's at least 15 years older than me so anyway uh, Daryl will cut. I'll have. I'll just note the time and have Daryl cut that out. All right. Let's for real say goodbye. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, like I said, Happy St. Patrick's Day. Hopefully, you're enjoying your corned beef and cabbage and uh, your potatoes. If you are Irish, you probably do smell like cabbage and have small hands and smell <laughs> like a carny. <laughs> If that's the case, head over to Amazon, see what they have in the personal hygiene department, see what you can do about it. You never know. Go to UglyTruth.com, click on the Amazon button and check it out. Or go to LipAndClip.com and check out the bath and body wash area. Maybe soak in some salts or some uh, bubble bath. <laughs> You're weird. Still enjoy the benefits of being Irish without smelling, so... I think that's a wrap, and we will uh, see you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs> La Decorateur calls. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.